Ooh, what's up guys and of course welcome to another video from me Scarander and today's episode is of course the top 10 Pokemon that got introduced in generation 6 if you haven't checked out my previous video of my top 5 Pokemon that got introduced in generation 6 it sucks make sure to check that one out this is of course the top 10 best one and the reason I did a top 10 is because there were a lot of good Pokemon this generation and I really believe a lot of them deserve a spotlight and I'm gonna do my best to um, well, tell you why they're good, and of course, since it is a top 10 that I created, you know the usual disclaimer that they're only my opinions, they're not based on any tier whatsoever, uh, it's just based on my own experience with them, then design, and then what they're used for. And really, um, if you have a different opinion, make sure to write that down below, because I do read every comment that comes on here, and since there were so many good Pokemon introduced this generation, I'm not surprised that your list is different by any means. Even though there were only 70 uh, Pokemon introduced this generation, they still brought a lot of good things to the metagame, and as a result, it was a very tough list to do. And like I said, I wanted it to be a top 5 to begin with, but a top 10 was the most fair one, to be very, very honest. So, without further ado, guys, this is my top 10 Pokemon introduced in Generation 6, so let's actually get to it. Number 10. Trogaldi. So yeah, this is definitely a Pokemon that I think is very underrated, consider what it brings to the table. The typing alone makes it so unique that it can deal with a lot of common threats. It shuts down almost any grass types, it can deal with water fire types, and it can actually be considered a special defense, it can actually deal with a lot of fair types. And even though, you know, doing neutral damage, poison is such a great coverage for dealing with those kind of pokes, and consider how common they are, um, Dragoli is definitely the, the poke to use, really. And it got some specially offensively pressure too, with both a high special attack. I think it almost is a 100 base, and it got access to Sludge Bomb, we got Skull, I think we got Surf, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, we got Ice Wind now, next generation. It's... It got the coverage to deal with a lot of things, even Draco Meteor, and I've, I've seen people using this with specs, and it pack a punch, because it can stay in a long period of time, because it's so specially defensively heavy, that it barely take notice when he was hit by a special attack, and that's why I love this Pokemon so much. The design alone screams Poison Dragon, and really, it's one of my favorite pokes for, because of that, the, the typing is so good, and it really brings a lot to the metagame. People are using it wildly differently, and I guess the most common one, and the one worth mentioning, is of course the physical sets. Why it doesn't have the physical attacking stats, it has access to Dragon Tail and Poison Tail, and in conjunction with Toxic Spike, this thing can actually deal a lot of pressure to against an opponent. And take that in conjunction with it, how tough this guy is to kill, it becomes a very, very deserving 10 spot Pokemon. And like I said, one of my favorite ones, and it brought a lot of good things in the metagame, and something that definitely was missing. So let's now get into the number 9 spots. Number 9, Aegis Slash. You are now free to press that dislike button if you want to. But really though, I do see Aegis Slash as one of the best sweepers in this generation that was introduced of course. But the thing was, and I can't really stress this enough and it's something I really think about, it was really all it was. Like, it's a defensive sweeper that you know, changed form to put the offensive pressure on. And while that is very, very good, and it has an easy way of setting up, it is one of the biggest threats, like I said, in the metagame, it's still all it is. It is extremely predictable, but it was very good if something like this was introduced. If the steel typing hasn't got nerfed by the dark of dark and ghost typing, this thing might actually have been even worse, thinking about it. And of course, the um, VGC set with toxic substitute, iron defense, you know, walling shit, it, this thing was a monster, when, even when it was introduced, but of course everybody used physical sets which is, are great because of their superior coverage of Sacred Sword, Iron Head, Shadow Claw, and Night Slash, and so on and so forth. It is a really, really good Pokemon, and I can't really stress this enough, it's one of the biggest threats in the metagame, and uh, it, I get why it was banned from Smogon, but as far as the Pokemon itself go, it didn't leave too much of an impression on the metagame more than it was a new type of sweeper, steel sweeper, to be able to deal with fair types. But that was actually as far as this Pokemon went, and 
a lot of people have been able to cover it with you know being able to go for a guard chunk with earthquake which isn't affected by the king shield so it it got issues it's it really really does but um as a standalone sweeper it is great wow it can hold its own really really well and that's why it is in the number nine spot number eight Kudra. So yeah, you know it's a tough list when a semi-legendary from this generation barely made a cut here. And really, it's nothing wrong with this Pokemon at all. I like Gudra. Gurum brought something that was missing from the Dragon types and that was a specially defensive heavy Pokemon. So what Hydreigon did for previous generation with a special offensive pressure, Gudra did this with a special defensive bulk and tankiness of a team. Gudra is not that fast of a sweeper, it should it even be regarded as just a sweeper. It's more of a highly pressuring defensive poke that can work in a lot of teams. It can work in rain team because of hydration, it can work in a sweeper team and a tanky team with a Gumi that sets the Pokemon down one stage of speed. It can also work as a setupper when it comes to recovering from it. You use Swampert, Gastrodon and other pokes that are extremely weak to grass. Uh, Gudra is your guy for a safe switch in where you actually can recover up and um, use a Zap to boost your attack and go with the physical set and actually set up an outrage and pretty much destroy the offensive team that you're going up against. Gudra is such a vast Pokemon and it brings a lot of necessary pressure to a team that might have been lacking from the DC generation. Sadly, it lacks a safe recovery besides the hydration rest. If it had a better recovery like Recover or anything like that, it might have been more worthwhile. Gudra is still a very, very good poke and should not be taken lightly. And like I said, in a Rain Dance team, this thing is incredible. I can't stress this enough. It got Curse to, to you know, set itself up. It, it isn't a standard sweeper, it's actually a slow sweeper if that's the case. But my god, if it doesn't work well for it, then I don't know what is. But sadly, it didn't get the title of the Special Defense of Wall this generation, even though it is that. It was actually taken, this title was actually taken by another guy, and that guy is... Number 7. Flawless. I hate this Pokémon so much. I really do. This thing got the weirdest stats ever, like... And when I say weirdest, I mean it got the bulk. This thing just won't die ever. I hate it for that. It's very good. It's the best special defensive wall this generation and it's the best cleric introduced this wall. You got access to aromatherapy, wish, energy ball and pretty much every <laughs> every fairy move introduced this generation of course besides raining kiss and that's probably a good thing to be honest. But yeah, Florges, really really tough Pokemon and like I said best cleric this generation and it stands tall in both UU and OU and does really really well. The typing alone is very very good because you do counter common threats. You have to have a decent steel type or, fairy or a poison type to be able to deal with this properly and even when you have that it's sadly it's not something safe to bring in into it. It's still lack in uh, its um, move pool and next generation will not save it. Uh, you get access to Giga Drain, so that's gonna be an issue. But that is as far as it goes, and that's why it's not higher on the list. So like I said, while it has the best special defensive bulk, it's still somewhat lacking as a standalone Pokémon. It's definitely a team player that can wish pass and stuff like that. But it's not a sweeper, even though we got special offensive attacking to do just that. But like I said, this Pokemon is very very good, it's hard to kill and I hate it for that, but that is also the reason it is on the number 7 spot. It is one of the best Pokemon introduced in generation, and definitely worthy of being called one of the key fair types this generation. Number 6. Heliolisk. What? How is this Pokemon so high on the list? Why is it high on the Smogon tier is your real question, and I know this. Hillisk might be one of the best electric types we introduced so far. It it rivals Lantern in coverage. Like, wow, this thing got Surf? Yes! It got some vast <laughs> coverage. It got access to Dark Pulse. It can learn Bulldoze. It can be physical. It can be special. Make it special. It like, get access to Grass Knot. It's got some freaking great coverage. I can't really stress that enough. And the best part with it is that 
it can work in teams with rain condition or in sun condition or even in sand it's made for it's the electric type for weather teams and that's why it becomes so good i mean this solar power set that i've seen around with the volt switch wow that hits hard it hits extremely hard and i love it it's great it's hit so damn hard that you don't even know what's packing from it and like i said they're in rain dance and having surf and dry skin to recover up how great is that it is incredible this pokemon just works and that's the thing that was so glad to see this generation was that a lot of pokemon were made to make other teams work better and this is a clear indication that game freak wanted pokemon to be able to introduce in different kind of condition and still being able to put the offensive pressure. Of course the evasion is banned by Smogantir and we get that, we all agree on that. If that were the case then this guy would be the D guy for Sandstorm team, but sadly it doesn't work like that. But still, this Pokemon was definitely one of the best when introduced this generation and that is why it is on the number 6 spot. Number 5 Noivern This is easily the best dragon type introduced this generation and i can't really stress that enough it is the fastest dragon type so far and it got the perks to utilize that really really well and um, most people use this with specs and i believe that is the only set worth using it with it got access to switcheroo which means you can lock down pokemon and i think the best part with this is that it can become a sweeper or a starter or both which means that this Pokemon is very very versatile and you want a starter Pokemon to be able to deal fair damage if it's free to go or ship damage if it doesn't work. And that's why it becomes great. We got access to Flamethrower, we got Draco Eater, Boom Burst, Taunt, um, it's pretty much I think Hurricane too, right? It just screams, give me a Mega Evolution in late and I'm good to go. This Pokemon has some of the most aggressive attacks in the game and it got a special offensive pressure to do that well and it's fast enough to you know consider that the ship damage will almost kill any poke or one shot them from the best range and of course you turn for you know shy off and do just the ship damage and feel free safer switching it's fast enough to do that and um, that was makes it so hard because you rarely get the chance to hit it it can't take damage but by god it you don't even need to worry about that you just need to worry about what comes in after it. If you, if you are able to deal with it, then you're in a good position, because that thing is usually the last thing that comes in when it doesn't have an escape left. Believe me. So that's why it is on the number five spot. Number four, Talonflame. So before anybody says anything about the Talonflame is used for noobs, of course, it really isn't true. Now is that? I mean, think about it. This generation, Talonflame made something that previous generation has yet to do, and that is actually bringing in a priority user with a lot of offensive pressure behind it to actually be so important that it needs to be in every higher tier team. I mean, think about it, this thing solely can deal with both the Mega Medisham and Mega Venusaur, and the thing was that this thing introduced that Stealth Rocks now needs to <laughs> actually be dealt with for real this time. Previous generation you just worked around it, you defog of course is very very important this generation because of the usage of it, but rapid spin was the only move back in Arena 5 and could be blocked. This generation you could actually deal with that which means that you could think outside your box and new players to this generation of course has trouble to keep in talent flame alive and that's a priority as a battler to take that one down of course. Good battlers make sure that this thing doesn't take hazard damage and uh, it has the hit and run of course with the U-turn, it can bulk up, it can roost, it can actually, it has some some good survivability and I really want to stretch that out that this generation made sure that people fought more vastly and outside their box with their teams to make sure that Pokemon like this stayed alive because they are game changers and wall breakers. And Talonflame really brought that and I am so glad to see this because it made the more strategic players even better and I'm really glad to see it and that's why it's in the number 4 spot. I have a lot of fun for this poke even though it is a hassle to deal with. It's it's good for good reasons and I'm glad to see that it was introduced and that way it's in number 4. 
Number three, Slurpuff. Oh man, oh man, this poke is so good. Look, it doesn't have the stats for its specific usage, but that's the thing. It can be anything. <laughs> it is so good. It has the ability of the course being a good cleric with insomnia, wish, and aromatherapy, but it can also be a physical offensive Pokemon with Unburden and Play Rough, uh, and of course the Belly Drum Citrus Berry effect, which means double the speed plus Belly Drum. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're dead. And that's the thing. It gets, I think, a Drain Punch now next generation here or in, or um, or as, and that's that is just unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> And really, I think one of the best thing, I, and I'm, the way I like to use it is, of course, a special def offensive pressure. Um, I like the cleric set, but Floor just definitely does this better. The special set does; it's not the best one to do it, but it can do it, and that's why I like it. And pretty really much to use red card, flamethrower, surf, and draining kiss or dazzling lame in conjunction with Calm Mind, and you build up your well, you guessed it, your special offensive pressure. Which means that you're gonna hit hard. Nevertheless, Slurp Up is so vast, so great, so awesome, and the design alone is so. It's so cute now, isn't it? It looks terrifying, but I love it. And I really like Slurp Up for its usability, and it, I've even got access to Cotton Guard. I mean, if this thing hadn't. If this thing had stored power, it would be the end of the metagame as we know it. Slurp Up is one of the best introductions to this game because it brought something that is kinda missing by the fair types, and that is speed and versatility, and of course the most important one, some safe switchings finally with some defensive bulks. We're going with special defensive but not defensive, so step up, you're my number three for sure. And number two, Malamar. So yeah, this is definitely one of the Pokemon that I feel are the most underappreciated this generation, and really? I know the four times effective bug typing is an issue, but really, we have the same issues with pretty much every dragon flying type, and even grass flying if you go that way. But that's the thing, that's really the only thing that's hindering it. Superpower with contrary, you know, do the 50% boost on both attack and defense, and pretty much builds itself up so it becomes the Kevlar of the Pokemon of the Generation 6. I can't really stress this enough, I like using this thing with Assault Vest and have the high special defensive bolt that Alder can get due to his stats and then build itself up a super power which means that it's it's almost impossible to kill without losing 2 to 3 pokes Malamar, you're the guy, like wow this Pokemon even got Infiltrator it got great specially offensive attack base, you want to use that it got access to Thunderbolt and Flamethrower, like I said Infiltrator on that, awesome it's very very vast and while its purpose in this game is very very clear, it's still a hassle to deal with, and yes, U-turn like I said is an issue, but you always can see that one coming and switch out, and Malamar has some great stats to cover itself up, and it can even be used in a trick room, and trick room and superpower is also great, like I said, contrary set is the most favorable one, and it is for good reason, this thing is just that good, <laughs> and I can't really stress that enough. Plus the design alone is so great, it's so cool, it's it's an octopus upside down and I don't know how they came up with that design but I love it, <laughs> I really do. And uh, yeah, besides that, hmm, we got one of the most unique typings, sadly Hoopa got the same typing but you know, until it was introduced, Malamar was the most unique one with it and uh, I like it for that because it brought a lot of good things to the game and I'm glad to see it introduced. And that's what is in the number two spot. Number one, Greninja. Yeah, most of you guys should definitely have seen this one coming, and for good reasons. Greninja is definitely, in my opinion, the best Pokemon to do this generation, and uh, there is actually no competition besides that. I tried to avoid this, I really did. But I like Greninja as a Pokemon, but that is not why it's on the top of the list. It is on the top of the list because it brings so much new and thoughtful things to this, this generation that fair, actually no other focus does. I mean, it's it's up there. It's top five best Pokemon's ever introduced in the generation, and uh, here's the reasons why. We start off with, of course, the protein ability that was introduced this generation. That is actually shared with Kecleon, but by God, if Greninja does this way better. 
true protein is both a good offensively ability which means that of course that the typing that you attack with is the typing you become which means that you always have stab behind you but that's not the best thing the best thing is that it works as a defensive set too and conjunction with the Greninja is fast enough to deal massive damage against any opponent it also has access to spikes both spikes toxic spikes which means that you can set up hazard it, can become, a, it could become a starter it become a great sweeper and it become a setupper. Sure, it lacks bulk up and call mine, and I think by God, thank you for that. Uh, it got access to U-turn. We got access to a new move called Water Shuriken, which means it's definitely it's an awkward jet move with priority, but it hits two to five times. And combine that with King's Truck, you got a Flincher and an Annoyer. So now we have four sets that works well with your ninja, all of them menacing and threatening. And that's the thing. It's the mobility of this Pokemon and the coverage it brings and the surprise ability of it of being almost anything that makes this Pokemon so goddamn good. And I'm so glad to see it. finally a starter, you know, stepping up to the challenge to become one of the best Pokemon so far. Yes, Empoleon did that previous in generation 4, but until that generation there was no comparison in how to take over the metagame. And like I said, Greninja brought something new. The water dark typing is not that good, and the, like I said, the protein makes sure that it doesn't become an issue. And of course, like I said there, that having the conjunction of change in typing really, really makes sure that this Pokemon works so goddamn well. It's nothing that is more satisfying than setting up spikes only to resist <laughs> and the Thunderbolt coming your way. Greninja, you're my number one for sure, and there is, like I said, no comparison. You're the best Pokemon to do this generation, and I'm glad to see you there. So, yeah, that's basically my list. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and like I said, if you have a difference of opinion and there's something you want to reach out on, make sure to write that down below, because I do read them, and I will appreciate it. Like I said, a lot of good Pokemon to do this generation, and I was definitely on the fence of putting both Claw Lister and um, what's more, yeah, Tyrantrum was also there, but barely they didn't make the cut. While Claw Lister is definitely one of the best Pokemon in Druzy Generations of Water type, it still brought nothing more than Sadly Blastoise did. And I guess for that reason alone, you just become the Sheep Man's Blastoise, sadly. Uh, but other than that, a lot of Pokemon here are. Great and Generation 6 brought a lot to the table and with Ruby Sapphire just around the corner I mean there is no end to how good this Pokemon can become. Like I said they have no access to Mewtwo remove as of now and we don't know how good they will become with that in mind and I also hope that my top 5 worst Pokemon will get the same treatment and become well worthwhile using. So yeah this was a very very lengthy video I thank you everybody for watching really um, don't forget to leave a like of course and if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe and remember the sky is the limit so have a good day and take care mm -hmm. bye